So the easy analogy to open with here is that Russia seems to be playing some kind of game of chess when it comes to its currencies, its trade deals, and its gold. But full disclosure, I grew up playing checkers. What do I know? So there are two popular drivers for the idea that the price of gold could shoot up significantly. One is the eventual demise of the US dollar as the world's reserve currency and then possibly the role of gold there. And then the other is the end of the coordinated manipulation on the derivative market for gold. Now I don't really feed either of those two narratives, but there are a few specific news stories right now supporting both ideas and we're going to take a look. Now, these are separate ideas, but they are interwoven in a few places. I'm going to point that out in a minute. Just keep in mind that these are developing stories. I won't jump to any conclusions. I'll just point out what it could mean if any of them actually play out. So to get specific, I'm talking about the idea of BRICS nations working on a basket-based reserve currency. We've been hearing about that a lot lately. And then the other is Russia's proposal for a new international gold market that would compete with the LBMA. Now, there's a lot of confirmation bias on stories like this around here. So we're going to look at this news from outside the typical precious metals echo chamber and just stick to the facts. You won't hear me say that Russia implemented a gold standard when they did not. I'm not here to make things up. I'm just going to point out events that could have a big impact on the price of gold. So let's just start by explaining what gold has to do with the BRICS basket currency idea. That idea would be some kind of average of the BRICS nation's currency. So take the currencies of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and then you'd create a single exchange value. Now, I can't even tell you how that would work, so let's skip past that part and look at the use case. That part's obvious. The goal, of course, is to coordinate foreign trade without using U.S. dollars. So India buying Russian gas, that's an obvious example. Now, presumably, there'd be more to it than that. There would be trade going both directions. So to do this, Indian banks would need to hold large amounts of rubles in reserve, and then Russian banks would need to hold large amounts of rupees in reserve. Now this all seems pretty simple, but that's been the sticking point. You can pick your favorite reason here. You could say most currencies, they're just not as strong as the US dollar. They're not as stable or as liquid as the US dollar. Maybe you just wanna assume that holding multiple currencies in reserve is just too complicated. Whatever the reason, it doesn't matter. That's not the important part. It's just the way it currently is. The US dollar is a much bigger deal in India than the ruble is. Now, so far, gold hasn't really played much part in this story. It's more a case of BRICS nations potentially bypassing the U.S. dollar and foreign trade. Now, the idea of a basket-based currency gets even more complicated as you involve more nations. And if we were to go back to that Russia-India example, there's talk of a hybrid approach that uses Rupay. That's India's state-backed payment system. That's really just an option for the one use case. The broader concept, it's far more complicated. And that's why gold keeps getting mentioned, even if it's only tangentially, because another route around the U.S. dollar that doesn't involve creating a brand new currency is a move into gold. And if you look at the importance of gold to the BRICS member nation, that's again, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. It's not a random leap. Gold is kind of a big deal there. Now, on top of that, we have seen gold mentioned. It's made a few cameo appearances. Russia's foreign minister, for instance, mentioned that they would take real assets in exchange for their exports. Now, he went on to clarify that he was specifically talking about gold. Now, that might have just been talk, but Russia even guaranteed a set price that its central bank was willing to pay for domestic gold in rubles for several weeks. But at 5,000 rubles per gram, that was well below the free market rate. It wasn't a gold standard, as some suggested, but once again, it raised the idea of gold's potential to not only be a reserve asset, but a possible reserve currency. Now that last part is a stretch, but it's a popular stretch. And last week we got another story that feeds into that idea because Russia proposed a new international gold market that would compete directly with the LBMA. And if you've been paying attention to the sanctions, you already know that Russia's gold refineries were banned from good delivery by the LBMA, the organization that sets the international standards for the OTC bullion market. They set about 78% of global gold pricing. 
So what these sanctions and what the LBMA ban means to Russia is that they can't use their gold to its full extent. So Russia's proposal for the Moscow World Standard, that's the MWS, that would create a competitor to the LBMA market and to the pricing model. And what that means to you is that there would be a new player with no obvious motivations to suppress the price of gold. And if you've ever thought the price of gold is suppressed by collaborative manipulation, you've probably thrown some shade in the direction of the LBMA. Now, if the Moscow world standard got legs, the reason that it wouldn't have those motivations is pretty simple. Russia itself is the fifth largest holder of gold and the producer of nearly 10% of the annual global gold supply. And the proposal includes a coalition that includes those BRICS nations. It also includes Venezuela, Peru, some Middle Eastern countries, and Africa. So a second group like that would make it a lot harder to manipulate the overall price of gold. So earlier I told you that these two stories are intertwined. And the first way is that if the MWS gold market and pricing mechanism did take off, then gold would no longer only be U.S. dollar denominated. They would most likely be denominated in this new BRICS currency. So not required, but that just makes sense. And then more significant than that, the idea of a basket-based currency would be greatly simplified if each country relied heavily on its own gold reserves rather than holding that significant amount of the foreign currency of each member nation. And in the case of Russia, at least, it would benefit them dramatically if it had an open market for its own gold. Now, I don't see either case happening soon, but I do think that both give a very strong case for the continued relevance of gold and the strong rationale for its continued growth. Now, it's easy to think that younger generations are only focused on digital currencies until you consider that there are huge population centers where gold is far more popular than it is here. Just look at those BRICS nations. And then on top of that, consider gold's potential role in international trade and foreign exchange. It's kind of a big deal. So pick your story. A new reserve currency involving gold as a reserve asset, possibly pegged to the currency itself, or a new international gold market making it much harder to manipulate the overall gold price. The implication is pretty clear in either case. I don't think that we'll see a near-term moonshot for gold, but they are both big stories and definitely something to pay attention to. So let's call it good there. Let us know what you think about the possibility of that new reserve currency or a new competitor to the LBMA. Are they likely cases or just a big stretch of the imagination? Let us know. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you want to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.